Good morning, beloveds. Okay. I'm all discombobulated. Um, I went out. To, yesterday was the opening day of the Renaissance Festival. So I headed out there and I'm going back this uh, this evening because she needs to leave early. because She's got her kids with her and I'm just not even sunbeams, not convenient. So we're just going to put the glasses on. Um, and so I'm trying to get everything done and you know, Hey, <laughs> all right. Um, October 9th, it is October 9th, which ironically is our anniversary. So, um, I did, as we were coming back from, uh, working out with the trainer, I, I it's, he's coming in the door. I said, happy anniversary. By the way, happy anniversary. And he went, Oh, and I was like, yeah, no, don't worry about it. We know we got married at the Renaissance festival. So her anniversary kind of gets lost in the opening of the fair. All right. Uh, it is October 9th. Our total, our title is my forgiveness sets me free. Our first quote is, and all their transgressions that they have, they have half committed. They shall not be mentioned unto them in their righteousness that they have done they shall live ezekiel uh 1822 okay um honestly that's one i think i would look up in uh it's called the way the way and somebody took the the, the bible and translated it into modern language i'd be curious to know what they think that they that means in the in the modern language um, so that's Ezekiel eighteen twenty two. if you're curious. Uh, and then this one is, the second one is, uh, cease weeping over the mistakes of yesterday and steadfastly beholding the face of the great and divine reality, walk into that light wherein there is no darkness. And that is this thing called you, page 130. Um, forgiveness means to give for exchanging one set of beliefs for another. I found a potent forgiveness technique once when I was having some financial strain. I made a list of all the people I felt had cheated me in the past or whom I had cheated, such as debts I never collected or paid or opportunities for gain I hadn't given or been offered. I knew I was onto something when many more of events surfaced than I expected. So I expanded my list to include people who had caused me any sort of pain or whom I had caused pain intentionally or not. Finally, I listed those who I felt had limited my sense of self-worth or whose self-worth worth I had limited. When the list seemed complete, I visualized actually speaking to the party's concern saying, you have always sought your good in the way that you thought was most effective. I no longer harbor anger towards you, and I claim that your good has found you. Then I re reworded the affirmation, forgiving myself. My resentment and re regret were replaced by a feeling of love and approval. My anxiety eased, and I came to see how forgiveness truly heals the one forgiving. Today, I know that every person in my past is deserving of the very best life has to offer. I let go of my part in any hurtful experiences, celebrating others' good and my own without reservation. I declare myself free. Uh, and that is JJ, which is Jesse Jennings. Um, and so he just gave us a very clear example of what I am always talking about, about how personal um, forgiveness really is. Um because he, he made the, he made the list. He made the list of all of the people that he had, he had any feelings towards either way, whether they had, uh, harmed him or he had harmed them. Um, so he made that list and then he visualized actually forgiving them. And the, the, the phrase that he used is fantastic, amazing, and wonderful. Um, in, I think should be in everybody's toolbox. Um, and, but that's just it. He was like, okay, he never actually spoke to any of those people. Now he may have later, but it, for the purposes of this exercise, he never spoke to any of those people. What he did was he visualized speaking to him and then it made him feel better. Um, and I will say when it comes to forgiveness work, uh, the best apology is changed behavior. So even if you never do go to that person and apologize to them when you have hurt them, if you change your behavior so that you're not doing the behavior that hurt them in the first place, 
I mean, really honestly, um, because a, when you get right down to it, forgiveness work is about yourself. Now, I'm going to go and say, because in the 12 step programs, they have the making amends and what they say in, in their step is that you go to the person and you make amends. So you apologize in person or you write whatever wrong. Like if you took something, you replace it, you know, that kind of stuff, unless it will cause more harm to the person. So there is, if you have actually harmed somebody, make amends, you know, um, and sometimes we have to accept, on the other side of the coin, sometimes we have to accept apologies we're never going to get. You know, there there are just some people in our lives that are never going to apologize for the harm that they've done. Uh, and we have to make choices. And one of the choices we can choose is to, uh, we can accept apologies we're never going to get. Now, that also comes with, do we continue to keep that person in their lives? And I've been very clear on my stance. If someone has harmed you and continues to harm you, they do not deserve a place in your life. Um, you are welcome to love them from a safe distance. Okay. Because hating them isn't going to do you any good. And it most likely won't harm them at all. So, you know, that's what I, you know, but you're, you're allowed to do it from a safe distance. If somebody has harmed you, you do not have to have them in your life. But that's, so that's where we are with the forgiveness work. He gave you a very clear example of how you can do forgiveness work with people that you may never, I mean, how many times do we have people who have, are, as, as Jesse likes to say, off the planet, you know, that we are never going to get an apology from. And so he is giving us a clear exercise in how to do it, um, in, in those cases. Uh, and then it is up to you whether you want to go to the person and make apology. And it does have some to do with whether or not you want them back in your life. You know, if, if you want to apologize to them, going to somebody and demanding an apology is, is likely not going to work. Now, if you see changed behavior, then that's a different conversation, you know? So there's a lot of moving parts about forgiveness work, but in the long run, when it comes down to it, I would probably say about 90, 85 to 90% of forgiveness work is all internal. It literally is about you. And that's why the title is My Forgiveness Sets Me Free. Because I can forgive you for the, the perceived harm. And that's, I'm going to use that word. It's like alleged harm if we were using legal speak. The perceived harm that you have done to me. And one of the things, one of the most powerful things that uh, that Jesse said in there is, I understand you were, you were trying to get your good. I understand you were trying, you weren't necessarily trying to harm me because nine times out of 10 people aren't trying to harm you. Probably 99% of the time people aren't trying to harm you. What they're trying to do is get their good and they're doing it in the only way they know how. And if that helps you to set you on a path of forgiveness, then that is a powerful, powerful piece in that piece about forgiveness is to, when we sit back and look and say 99% of the time when we have been hurt by another, they were just trying to get their good. And as Maya Angelou says, I did the best I could until I knew better. And then I did better. Um, I've seen her it quoted a number of different ways, but that's the gist of it. You know, it's like we all do the best that we can. And when we know better, we do better. Uh, that's, you know, I had very, very, very young parents. I still have very young parents, you know. Uh, I'm closing in on 50. They're closing in on 70. So they're young. They're very young. Um, and they made a lot of mistakes. And, and I understand that. And from this perspective, I can look back and say, I, I understand you did the best you could with what you knew, you know. and and that goes a long way to improving my relationship with them. And then of course, every now and again, you just, you're just going to have that moment and, and then you're going to get over it and go on. Um, so forgiveness work really, honestly, 85% of forgiveness work literally is about you. And it's not an ego thing. It is not an ego thing. It is about getting in there and looking at the situation and having empathy for the people that you're in the situation with. Um, 
about understanding them. And that's, that is, a, that's one of the signs of maturity is when you can look at everybody's side of the situation and go, okay, I understand you're trying to get your good. Now, I don't have to tolerate it. I do not have to put up with it. I can, I can remove myself from your reach in this and, and, but I'm not going to shame you, uh, for it. And I'm not going to blame you for it. I am going to say, this is not okay. And, 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 and set myself where I need to, you know, to take care of myself. Um, but you know, that's, that's where forgiveness is. Uh, it's a little bit of empathy. Actually, it's a lot of empathy. It's a lot of empathy. Um, but empathy, just because you have a lot of empathy does not mean you are tolerating. Okay. What it means is I understand. I understand. And I forgive you. And as he said, I forgive myself for allowing that situation to last as long as it did. Or even, you know, for putting myself in that situation. Because sometimes that's what it happens. Um, all right, let me go back because he, I like, I like that line and I want to make sure that I, I quote it correctly. Um, is, uh, all right. When the list seemed complete, I visualized actually speaking to the party's concern saying you have always sought your good in the way you thought was the most effective. I no longer harbor anger towards you and I claim that your good has found you. All right. That right there is, is, is powerful. I understand that you were trying to get your good. I no longer harbor the anger. I know that your good has found you. I mean, that just makes me, it makes me feel really good just to say those words. And it's not even my exercise. So I would suggest trying it. All right. Let me read it one more time just so that in case you're trying to Catch it down. You have always sought your good in the way you thought was most effective. I no longer harbor anger towards you. And I claim that your good has found you. Um, I am Southern. I was raised Southern. Uh, and we have a phrase, the, the Lord bless you and keep you. Okay. Which is a wonderful phrase. Uh, but we have, a, we, we have an addendum to it far away from me. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you far away from me. And, uh, I know that your good has found you. I know that your good has found you, but it's okay if your good keeps you far away from me. So, you know, it's kind of like, bless your heart. It's like, depending on how, what, how it's emphasized. Oh, bless your heart. Oh, bless your heart. Okay. So it, it is about the attentions behind the word. I know that your good has found you. Uh, so I would say that your mission today, should you choose to accept it, practice that phrase when you are dealing with people that you would like to forgive. I know that your good has found you. I harbor no anger towards you. I know that your good has found you. Uh, I, I think it's wonderful. It's powerful. Um, and it can, it can definitely move you in the right direction. I am not going to sit here and tell you that forgiveness work is easy. It is not. Um, but it is worth doing. It is absolutely worth doing. Uh, okay. So that's two Sundays in a row where my reading has come from my own senior ministers. It's really cool. Okay. Um, the second one is the same one I always recommend. It's the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Uh, in my case, I could have chosen to sleep in or get up and go to the gym. I'm, my loving, kind, compassionate thing was to go to the gym. And he was cognizant of the fact that I had been at fair and was going back to fair. And so he made sure to do a lot of mobility work and stretching work. And, you know, that's what you look for in a trainer. You look for somebody who, um, is, is, is knows what your issues are and works on them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so it can look like a nap. It can look like a deep breath. It can look like, t um, taking a walk. It can look like making a point to get something and really enjoying it. Okay. So there's that too. Um, cause life is meant to be enjoyed. Self care is about making sure that you have the time and the energy to enjoy your life. 
All right. So create that habit, create that default setting, create that first response, create that bank of love, kindness, and compassion. You deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. So absolutely practice on yourself and then create a bank so that no matter what happens, your first response is loving, kind, and compassionate, and you have plenty to share. All right. That's how we create a world that works for everybody. All right. Um, I will be moving into the, um, uh, do something to engage your mind and your body. Drink plenty of water. I did not drink enough yesterday. I know this. <laughs> I made sure to drink the mineral water this morning um, uh, to, to help with that because I ended up with a cramp last night. I never enjoy those. Um, and uh, so hydrate, 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 especially if you're outdoors all day. Uh, I mean, I was in a building, but effectively outdoors because no air conditioning. Um, and then uh, take... Uh, Early in your day, bright light. I got to watch the sunrise this morning. It was fantastic. And I enjoy watching. I think I enjoy sunrises more than sunsets. Interesting. Um, so, uh, and then in the words of Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time because it's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness, which means it's our superpower. All right. Like the Christ consciousness, which we come pre-installed with, heaven is a state of mind, which is accessed by love. That's our password, love. Um, the more loving we can be with ourselves, the more loving we can be with those around us, um, all living beings, uh, and especially those with claws that are now digging into our fingers. Um, that's, that's how we create heaven, all right? Uh, okay. So now I'm at the social media part. We are creative life spiritual center, creative life spark. Um, we are also, I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Uh, you want to know what's going on? I mean, our website's creative life spiritual center. So dot com creative life spiritual center dot com. Yeah. Uh, and our email is info at creative life dot org. So you want to know what's going on in the center, the book studies, the classes, anything that's going on like that, then just email info at creativelife.org and that will get you on the, the constant contact and the hot links, uh, which reminds me I need to do that Instagram post. So, um, okay, I need to go eat something. So have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, a wonder-filled day, an amazing day, a Sunday. Um, hopefully that front comes in because, yeah, 88 today, 88 yesterday, next week, the high might be 80. I'm looking forward to it. So um, there we are. All right. Whatever else you do today, know that you are loved. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. I tell you to have a good day. And then I remind you, if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you're enough just as you are. You are that beloved child of God. So take care of yourself, okay? Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you at 9 a.m. The only day for the next seven weeks, um, possibly eight, depends on Dickens, it, that that will change is that we um on Saturdays you will get me at night instead of in the morning but I'll still get it done all right uh so know that you're loved and take care of yourself and I will see you next time